While I couldn't sleep, I decided to design something different. Since I was working on another project that involved the fifth element, I decided to do some coasters. Now these are very simple to do, and I'm actually going to walk through the design process for the Earth, since it's the simplest, and then show the few minor differences for air, fire, water, and then the overall design of the holder. So this is the final design of the Earth element for the coaster and I'm actually going to roll all the way back and do it from scratch for the most part just so that you can see how it's done so here's the top view let me enter the sketch here's the top view of the sketch let me get rid of these lines so I can walk through it these remaining lines. So what I did here for the diameter of the coaster and I believe it's about 90 millimeters somewhere around there for this and then there's an extra three millimeter gap on each side for the edge that comes up. So to do the actual design in the center, I placed a single line here, and then I do Control V C to copy, Control V to paste, and that gives me this option. I come over here and tell it that my Y distance is going to shift by three millimeters. Actually, in the case of this design, it needs to be negative three millimeters and that gives me one of the bars. So what do you do with this? Do you have to keep doing that design all the way down? No you don't. You go to sketch, rectangular pattern, select these two, and then I am going to drag this down until it touches this line here which I believe is negative 77 millimeters. Now that makes it nicely centered on the design. Now obviously three of the bars doesn't look so good so I played around and decided that seven bars look the best overall. <coughs> so once that's done you can click OK and now you have those bars in place. So the next step is to extrude everything so that you actually have a coaster. So the first extrusion that I'm doing is everything at two millimeters and what that gives me is the bottom plate of the coaster. Now I want to have the edge come up for a total height of five millimeters. So I re-enter that sketch so I can do an, I don't know if it cooperates, so I can do an extrusion get a top view simply because it's easier to select everything and I go around selecting everything around the perimeter of the coaster. Once that's done I tell it to extrude to a height of five millimeters and that gives me this design which is basically a blank plate or coaster really uh, with no design in the center. So I edit the sketch again just so that I can do an extrusion, select the pattern, and then I extrude that up four millimeters. That gives me a nice little lip there at the very edge around the perimeter so that the glass doesn't slip off, that type of thing. And I prefer that look. If you don't, then all of that could have been extruded in one step. So once that is all extruded, what I like to do is select everything, go to Modify and Combine. It'll automatically select everything that is going to be combined. And what this does is create less of a chance of oddities happening when you actually go to generate the 3D print. From here, you can just do the 3D print, select the actual item, 
and click OK, save it, and then import that into whatever slicer you like to use. So what's different between this and the other elements? Uh, not much really. In the case of the other elements, the only real difference is that I use splines. Now the air and water splines are basically identical and just mirrored. Uh, since the air begins with a low and the water begins with a high, what I did to take care of that, if you have one of these splines, and I'm just going to drag a copy of it over here so I can show you. Once you have that spline and you want to reverse it, you can just draw a line across whatever path you want to reverse. Select Sketch, Mirror, select the spline itself or whatever you want to copy or mirror. Select the mirrored item and now I have a copy of it. So here we have air and this one is water. Very simple. Select those and go ahead and delete those for now. Now the fire element is basically the same spline. I simply made some alterations to it so that it was slightly straighter. Well it is actually really straight at the top and bottom and just a little squiggle there in the middle. So how you would do that is if you have one of these open and I'll go ahead and copy this again since that's what I did in the case of the actual design. I had this. If you select on your spline and you have these little green balls that appear all over the place. You can use this to straighten that out. Select this one. Straighten that one out. And that is almost all I did for the fire. I think I touched these up slightly just to give an overall look to the design that I was looking for. And there I have the same basic spline that I started with just changed for the fire element. Well, you can't really have coasters without a holder to place them in. Let's, without going through step by step, I'm going to go ahead and open the sketch. And in the case of the sketch, I went uh, about 100 millimeters for the inside because the each of the coasters, I believe, is a total diameter of 96 millimeters, so that gives a couple of millimeters to spare on each side. Uh, 104 millimeters to the outside edge. I'm sorry, 106 millimeters to the outside edge, and 104 millimeters in diameter for another element that I'm using. I placed a line across right here, and that allows me to extrude only this part of the arc. And this design overall was my attempt at simplifying the hands for the fifth element, if you've seen the movie. So I basically extruded this up three millimeters for the base, then I extruded this section up here for that edge. Then I went in and that 104 millimeter section I actually selected so that I could create these little grooves in between. Uh, it's a one millimeter groove, uh, four millimeters, one, four, one, four, one, four. Since the overall height is 15 millimeters and this is 20 millimeters, it'll fit quite nicely inside. Uh, to keep it from being a flat design, I did a fillet on the inside and outside edge here to approximate fingers. And then I did a fillet across the top just to smooth that out. And then the same thing at the top of the base. So this was the design and let's take a look at the finished products. 
So here are the pieces out of the printer. These are the coasters and then the holder. These were printed with Hatchbox wood filament. I wasn't sure what the overall look I was going to go for. And I've decided I'm actually going to paint over this. Just a waste of the wood filament. But uh, I'm going to paint over it with um, some standard spray paint. And then the stone texture paint to get the final look that I'm shooting for. I did a sample piece here and this is just with the stone texture applied uh, without the preliminary paint to lighten the base and I wasn't quite happy with this so I actually tried it on another sample that I have laying around and this is with the base beige coat uh, before the stone texture is applied and I like this look so that's what I'm going to use now I would video the actual spray painting, but it's after midnight at this point in time and I'd like to get this sprayed so it can dry overnight and I can apply a matte clear coat over it. And then possibly some additional painting to add some layering. We'll see how it goes. So here's a quick look at the results right after being painted. I think it was applied a little too thick. We'll see how it goes. There definitely needs to be some additional work done to it after uh, to give it some additional depth. But we'll see what it looks like after it dries. And go from there. And here are the finished results. I think it came out looking pretty good. So we have earth, water, oh sorry, air, water, and fire. They all stack up nicely and fit into the little holder. Ready to be used. They are coated with a matte clear coat, so you should be able to wash these. Uh, I wouldn't wash them in a dishwasher, but you should be able to wash them in the sink if you're careful uh, without removing any of the coating, especially after it cures completely. So until next time, Keep designing.